I'm Xanderwood. I make indie games and tutorials on game development. I also play your indie games every week on my channel. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss a video. Before we get into the video, again just a massive shout out to my wonderful Patreon supporters James Welch, Basic Terror, Carl Zang, Clone13, Fuzzle CC, Jet Simon, Olivia Bernier, Arta Warwijas, Retro Galaxy, Bam Bam, Amari Lewis, Endmark Games, and Seth Kobel. Thanks for supporting my game dev journey, guys. And if you're interested in becoming a Patreon, you can check out the link in the description to get access to free pixel art, tile sets, music, all 100% royalty free, and new every single month. Hey guys, welcome back to the Castlevania tutorial series. In this episode, we are building stairs. Unfortunately, I recorded the whole thing, built the staircase, and it didn't record. So instead of doing the whole thing again from scratch, I'm going to walk you through exactly what I did step by step so you can then replicate that in your own game and then we can be back up to speed. So let me just show you how it works. You can walk along and you'll automatically get put on the staircase at the top. At the bottom, you won't unless you're pushing up. So you can walk left and right. If you're pushing up when you collide with the green box, you'll be put on the staircase, otherwise you won't. You can jump on the staircase and it will drop you to the bottom. You can also push down or S and that will drop you off the staircase as well. Also, before we get started, in I have changed the name of Player Controls Platform Group uh, from Player Controls to Player Controls Platform because I was playing around with the 8 directional behavior. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just delete the word platform. So it goes back to the player controls. Um, it's important to make sure that if you change your groups midway through, you take a look at the set group active commands because this one doesn't update. So I updated this one and added a platform on it. And this one didn't get changed to player controls platform, which then interfered with the door mechanics. But now I've changed it back. It should be fine. I can walk straight through and it does exactly what it's supposed to do. So let's talk you through how to build this staircase. So first of all, you're going to need a few sprites. The first thing you're going to need is this yellow uh, rectangle. Uh, the size of this rectangle is 128 width pixels wide by 16 pixels high. And you can see with the collision box, I've just made it. And again, I've toggled the grid on here. You can do that by pushing this little button up here. You can configure it, make sure it's 16 by 16, and then just set the bounding box to 16 on the X, 10 on the Y for the top left. It can be 16 on the bottom, 16 on the Y for the bottom left, 128 by 10 on the top right, and 128 by 16 on the bottom right. And again, leave this first square without any collision box on it. Uh, that is simply a sprite, and that is the width of it there. The size of it in the game is 120 by 16. I've just kind of stretched it out to make it fit the exact width between the bottom and the top. And I've turned, you can see these little red lines here. I've turned show collision polygons on here in the properties menu. That's because I wanted to see exactly where we were colliding. So I want to make sure that there is a ramp here with the collision on the uh, on the stair sprite right where we're hitting it on the floor. And again, right up here to, to coincide with the top left hand corner of that ground sprite. So the transitions are nice and smooth. Once you've made that one, you're going to need two green boxes. Now these are exactly similar to what I've done over here. I just cloned this one. The bottom one, I've called it Stair Stopper, and the top one, I've called it Stair Stopper 2. And then all these are is just sprites, and they're 16 by 16 with a full collision box around them. And then all I've done is stretch this one out one to the left, so it's one grid block to the left bigger, if that makes sense. And then this red one here, this is a stair zone. This is exactly the same as these cam zones, so I've just duplicated that called it stair zone and I've rotated it to be in line with the stairs and I've just dragged the width out so it's just slightly shy of the top and just slightly shy of the bottom. That's all you're going to need in terms of sprites to make this work. Now if we go back to the events I've created, let me just close these groups down, I've created a stair group where all the logic happens to make the stairs work. 
So let's talk you through this. First thing you're going to need to do is create a new Boolean global variable. And this variable is going to detect whether we are on the stairs or not. And it's just called on stairs and it's equal to false. Remember to create a Boolean variable, you can right click, add global variable, call it whatever you want and then set it to Boolean. And that one is false by default because we're not on the stairs when we start. Then I've set the events that say if we're overlapping the stair stopper, which is this first one here. So if the player box, the this one here, the, the green square, the base, if that's overlapping this one and the W key is down, so if we're pushing up at the same time, then we set the stairs to true. Now, you may be thinking, if I push W, I'm just going to jump. And what I've done up here in the player controls group is I've added another condition to W. I've added the if is not overlapping stair stopper and all you do to add that is you can select the the little line of code in here and push c on the keyboard and that will bring up a condition and then you can just put that in there remember i on the keyboard to invert and i've also put that down here on the s key um, if s is down and we're not overlapping stair stopper because what i don't want to do is have the player come through walk through here think they need to push down to stop themselves going up the stairs but then just crouch instead so if we're overlapping this green box the jump and the crouch get disabled which is fine because we don't want them to be doing those things when we're interacting with the staircase coming back down to the code here i have next line i've put is if the player base is overlapping stair stopper two also set the on stairs boolean to true so effectively that what that means is if we're coming in from the bottom as soon as we hit this if we're pushing up then we're going to set the stairs boolean to true which means we're on the stairs and if we're coming the other way i don't want any keys to be pushed because i want to automatically default to being on the stairs so i don't want to just fall off the top as if the stairs weren't there i want it to default to go on the stairs and then give the player the choice to push s to drop through or to jump or whatever the case may be so if we're touching the top one, if we're overlapping that, we automatically go on the stairs. If we're overlapping the bottom one with the W down, we're going to go on the stairs. Now, if we're on the stairs, this is what happens. I've got this um, if and else statement here. So if we're on the stairs, set the stairs, jump through enabled. And that's the behavior that I've given to this yellow sprite here called stairs. So if we look at behaviors, all I've got is the jump through behavior. You can add it here if you add new behavior. I don't know if it will come up because I've already added it, but it's in there. You can add it on and then by default, we're not enabling it because remember, we don't want to just go up the stairs if we're not holding W. So when we start, the default is off. So when we go back to the code, if we're on the stairs, then we will automatically set that enabled and we'll be on the stairs when we push W holding over this. So it'll be just in time. As soon as we hit that, it will enable this. Remember this red line here. This is the collision box. It will enable that so we can then go up the stairs. I also want to slow the player down when we're climbing the stairs because I don't like the idea of going up the stairs at the same speed. It's a bit of a grind walking up the stairs. And in the original game, if you look at the stair speed, the player does slow down when we are climbing the stairs. If we push S at any point while we're on the stairs, so you can see I've added a sub event here and you can add a sub event by clicking the event and pushing B on the keyboard. If we push S while we're on the stairs, then we're gonna set the platform, um, the player base platform behavior to jump through. I'll show you where to find that. Double click on player base and then under platform behavior, you're gonna set fall through. And then we're going to set the stairs back to false because we're not on the stairs anymore. Um, if we don't push S and if we're not on the stairs, so basically if none of this is true, then we're going to set the stairs jump through behavior to disabled because we don't want the stairs to be active if we're not on them. And we're going to set the player speed back to 100. And then the last thing we've done is add this condition at the bottom that says if the player base is not overlapping the stair zone, set the player back to false. Because what was happening is we would hit this one, we'd go up the stairs, we'd get off the stairs, and we'd still be technically in that Boolean variable of on stairs. So we'd be moving slowly, the stairs would still be enabled, and I didn't like that. So I've just made this red zone here a kind of check zone. So if we're not overlapping this, then by default, we're not on the stairs anymore. So everything else can then be false. And that's it. And that's all you need to put in to make that work. Um, just remember, don't forget to put in these conditions up in the W and the S. 
in the player controls group that says if we're not overlapping the stair stoppers then we can uh, jump and crouch and it works pretty well if we're holding w we don't need to hold w the whole way up we can simply we can jump on the stairs we can simply just push it as we're going up and then we automatically default to the top we can attack while we're on the stairs and if we crouch we just drop through we can't jump up onto the stairs we have to go through the base of the stairs in the next episode we are going to design the sprites so we're going to design the staircase um, so it looks a little bit more authentic um, and not just these random weird sprites here and we're also going to animate the player in a stair climbing because although it looks okay when he's walking up the stairs i want the animation to be slightly different i think his knees will come a little bit higher he'll probably crouch down a little bit more because in the original the animation does change as he's walking up the stairs so there we go there's our stairs in in its essence in the next episode like i said we'll do the animations if you've made it this far thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one